Okay, so I wanted to dive into some macro fundamentals and we're going to be taking models from EPP Research and uh, Ryan Miller. They basically have a model of domestic fundamentals, which is looking at housing, uh, income, manufacturing, and I think unemployment. Employment's the last one. Uh, but uh, Ryan has produced some content for uh, you know deep dive into those aspects and then his overall thoughts. Um, so we'll look at that. And um, you know, other people I recommend looking at um, Darius Dale from 42 Macro and uh, Jeff Snyder. So what's making this difficult is that we're getting like bank contagion and then we got some weird kind of uh, inflationary factors with the uh, housing and uh, just general things with core PCE like services being stubborn and housing. Uh, so, you know, the end of the conclusion of that for bias and trend is inconclusive. Uh, my overall judgment says that um, unless we close the week above, uh, I'm going to have to move this to here. The range has expanded. Unless we close the week above here or uh, below here, we're, we're pretty much going sideways. And uh, nothing's going to really change until that changes. But uh, this oh, we'll keep here. But uh, we need a break somewhere. And uh, if we were to put on the uh, the moving average channel fake out, so this is the fast, this is the slow. We need a close, technically, maybe, yeah, above this area, or we need a weekly close below this area. That's kind, of, and we're dead. We're pretty much dead set in the middle of the uh, the chop zone. So, the conclusion is we go sideways until we break out, and we don't know when that's going to be. So then that kind of makes us want to look at the fundamentals as to what do we see, and. Um, just generally, what I've been hearing is, you know, meet Kevin, he's bullish. He thinks things are going up. Um, Darius Dale, he's uncertain. Just be in treasury bills and just wait until the fallout happens, and then you get in. Uh, but he says the, the risks are too high for these short-term volatile movements to just be able to take risky bets on any, a trend or anything like that. And I agree with him as an investor. Yeah, with uh, with me, Kevin. I don't know. He's appealing to a certain audience, and that's one audience with like unsatiable risk appetite. And I, I just I just can't do it. But um, this is kind of what I would say is what would give me certainty is that if we um, make a close below any of these levels, uh, we invalidate. Uh, the opposite side. So right now, both have an equal chance as bullish or bearish because it's going sideways. But if we close above this area, the bears are wrong. If we close below this area, the bulls are wrong. So both have an equal chance of uh, becoming right. You know, I will say Jim Cramer's bullish. So you know that comes with its own statistics. Uh, but moving on, so I, I did some digging, uh, looking at Ryan Miller's uh, newsletter. He's basically saying that uh, monetary policy comes first and interest rates, and those set the bounds for the housing market, and housing and manufacturing, or manufacturing and housing set the the field for risk on risk off so with that in mind he's saying that manufacturing is looking bearish while real estate housing is looking bullish and he's trying to see if that changes uh, luckily for us we got a, a, a forecasting tool for finding cycles 
So, you know, he talks about all this stuff about recession, interest rates, and housing. Uh, and he's got all these graphs. Like, they're okay. They're not really super interesting. They're more confusing than anything. Uh, the housing starts, he says, like, it's overall decline. But then he kind of hedges uh, his statements. Um, so he's saying manufacturing, yeah, look, it's bearish. It's bearish. So we just need housing to agree. So this is kind of where he hedges his, uh, his argument. So this is the housing versus manufacturing conflict. He's like, yeah, look at this. Like it's all these charts. Uh, we just need housing to agree with the overall consensus that it's going down. Uh, M2 is going down. Interest rates are going up. And uh, we're seeing these, uh, these banking crisis news. And we just need real estate to come down. So uh, he states that um, if the trend continues, the overall long-term trend, which is down, the bear rally is just noise. But then he also, you know, he basically says, well, if manufacturing gets a bounce, then we might see a risk on rally to a window, a small window to buy stocks. So that's kind of like that possible second leg of inflation. And then he's saying your manufacturing is greater than coincident indicators, uh, which is greater than asset price movements. Since the longer term uh, fundamentals still point to the downside, what does the deterioration of manufacturing data mean for the coincident data, thus asset prices? So then he goes on uh, talking a little bit more here. Uh, so GDP and uh, employment. Uh, uh, so he, he um, tries to formulate uh, monthly average of all these things, non-farm, retail, um, consumption, you know, because for, for the most part, these are all tied into like growth and the overall downtrend is down on all of those. Production, employment, non-farm, retail, consumption, income. And um, so he expects asset prices to fall. So the question was like, is manufacturing going to get a bounce or is housing going to get a bounce down? That was basically his question, his quandary he couldn't figure out is like, which direction, what are the, is there going to be a new direction for manufacturing or is there going to be a new direction for housing? So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So I was going to show some memes. Let's just carry on. So uh, some work I've done already is... <clears throat> I've uh, come up with a lot of these uh, different forecasts already. And we'll take a look at, so this is the core PCE right here. Core PCE is, oh no, this is the regular PCE. Regular PCE is topping out at June 26th. So just keep that in mind. So PCE is, uh, consumer expenditures um, and it's basically it f it leads CPI so this is basically saying we're expecting more of an upward direction with an unknown, unknown magnitude of consumption um, and a, a, a topping out in June and that's that's including everything um, core PCE is excluding energy and food. This that's it's including energy and food. So this is the four week treasury. We see the four week treasury bill topping out in June. So June is starting to come up a lot. Uh, delinquency data. So delinquency data is looking like it's it's peaking out roughly June to. I don't know, all the way till 2024, 2025. So that's really interesting. Uh, reverse repo. We're seeing two uh, peaks that look familiar, one in June and one in uh, March 26th, which is uh, this coming week. Reverse repo is the view from the lender and the view from the lender when rates, uh, when the, and the price goes up on reverse repo, that's the that's sign that people that are lenders are hedging they're they're fine. They're going to safety, and reverse repo is like treasury bills. But instead of putting it in the uh, treasury bill, you put it with the Fed. You put money with the Fed, and there's a 
the Fed is rewarding people with putting their money with them. It's to take money out, uh, money supply out of the system. Unemployment is peaking in June, uh, it looks like. Unemployment rate. And then credit spreads, looks like it's peaking in June. So that is like big macro credit market, big macro fundamentals. And then we can get into more of the local domestic fundamentals with which is like housing, uh, income, employment, and manufacturing. So those are the, the graphs, the charts that I've made already. Now the, the, we found uh, em, manufacturing employees. So there's manufacturing employees and there's manufacturing new orders. So this is like one way we can get a window into manufacturing. Uh, new one family houses sold. Uh, this is a view into housing. This is the new one family houses sold. So like this is the first family house that people have ever bought. You know, first home, first time home buyer. And uh, I don't know if that's through the FHA loans or anything, but uh, they they document this. Um, I wanted to also check other housing. I know there's the mortgage back mortgage rate, so we could take a look at this data: the uh, thirty-year fixed mortgage rate, uh, mortgage-backed uh, applications, uh, existing home sales and uh, new home sales. So these are, this is data that I, I, I haven't really looked up on the Fed website and we kind of only want care about new fa single family homes sold. But um, if we were to look overall on a big time frame, it's a downward trend. So we expect uh, downward trend to continue. It looks like within this last year, uh, we got some kind of uh, bounce here on the mortgage applications. Within this year, uh, we started to curl down on the mortgage rate uh, back at 7%. So it's pretty high. And then uh, single existing homes sold, uh, looks like we've had an uptick. And on uh, new home sales, we had roughly an uptick in some way. So. Uh, what we're curious is the 30-year fixed mortgage rate average, uh, and then also the uh, new one-family houses sold. So let's go ahead and just take a look at this really quick. To see if there's a fluctuation and like a change coming up and how it would affect uh, people uh, for buying houses. So let's put it in here. We might have to do percent year change year over year. So uh, the question is housing and manufacturing. Which direction there are, is the forecast facing over what periods? <clears throat> so the mortgage rate, uh, it looks like it's on a downtrend. Uh, not the same unknown magnitude, overall downtrend. And then it's bottoming roughly, looks like Q3, Q3, Q4 of this year. So we're expecting the mortgage rate to go down and bottom around Q4. It makes sense. Uh, it makes sense like rate cuts. So uh, it's on its way. It's just taking its time. So that's uh, one metric for housing is that uh, we're, we're getting, you know, the policy is probably close to uh, near the top of its hiking cycle. So that's kind of just what's been popularized uh, recently of people talking about the hiking cycle, the rate stopping. Uh, according to uh, the new one family houses sold, uh, people buying their house for the first time. It looks like we're on the upswing and we'll peak out in June. So housing is starting to accelerate 
going into uh, the end of the first quarter, peaking in June. So uh, according to the Ryan Miller in this paper, you know, like we're, we're really curious as to housing and manufacturing. So if we're seeing an acceleration in housing, uh, you know, do we see a balance in manufacturing? So that's the question. So here's manufacturing. This is the new orders for manufacturing. So let's take a look and see uh, where that's going. So this is the uh, housing. Uh, we can go ahead and get rid of this. And uh, this is new orders. This is housing here. Let's get rid of this so we're not confused. So this is the new orders, new order. And uh, we're seeing a deceleration here. Uh, that we're currently here in March, so this is where we're at. We would see a bottom roughly going into, uh, going into, what is that? Five, May, May, going into May, bottoming in June, and then going up. So it, it looks like uh, we're gonna see a continual decline in new orders uh, for manufacturing. So a continuation of this direction in manufacturing, which is uh, decline in new orders. And then for manufacturer employment, manufacturer employment, this is uh, not manipulated for year over year change. It's just as is, and we're uh, going to the, don't go into today. We're seeing like we're in the middle of this downtrend and will bottom roughly near June. So it's saying the same thing as the new orders, the cycle for the new orders, is that we're seeing a bottoming near June and uh, we're on the macro charts that we looked at for the treasury, uh, the uh, unemployment rate, they look like they peak uh, in June. So it seems like June is coming up as a, a date to pay attention to, not saying that it, you know, there are no certainties, there's only probabilities. So we have a high probability of something happening in June to where we see a shift in macro uh, from the, the actions of the Fed or the, just the cycle of just everything in general. So that's our summation, uh, our conclusion of uh, just the overall fundamentals. The overall conclusion is manufacturing is to continue its downtrend and housing is to continue its uptrend until June. And that might cause the market to go sideways until June. Who knows what happens? Um, my thing that I listen to is price action. And the price action of invalidation for a trend is basically the bears are wrong if we close the week above here. The bulls are wrong if we close the week below this thick green line. And we're just dead middle. We expect new single family homes sold to increase and we expect manufacturing new orders and employees to decrease. So that could cause the market to go sideways until June. Um, there's no way of knowing if that's gonna come true until we get a weekly close outside the bounds. That's kind of what I would say to put a bow on it as expectations for the coming future. Uh, I will say that Darius Dale said uh, the volatility and the risk looks too great that it's you're just probably best sitting in treasury bills until everything is, you know, there is the fallout, the fallout happens uh, versus trying to predict the next move. I think that's like the wisest move as an investor to preserve capital. Uh, and prevent it from eroding due to volatility. Or you could just wait and save yeah, and just hold your current positions, just save, 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 stockpile. Uh, but that's kind of just taking the knowledge from these smart people, um, taking the models that they have and looking at the market and applying it. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, Retail consumption is on the downswing. Uh, it matches the consumption, matches really well with the manufacturing uh, new orders and employment, manufacturing employment. 
the the yeah I, I I just honestly don't know what's gonna happen uh, if Deutsche Bank goes under or if they run into some problems or if the the um, interventions for the banks and what they've done currently fails I have no idea what's coming I just know that I should be prepared for any kind of downward uh, movement to because it's like twenty to twenty five percent possibility. 3,000, 3,200 as a, a target to the downside. So the risk there is big and uh, the future is uncertain and unknown. You know, week to week, uh, weekly close to weekly close and to the monthly close, seeing where we are there then is the biggest alpha uh, because we need time and price to move and in time and price is information and it's information by participants who've looked at the fundamental data. The new data that's coming out this coming week is GDP, is uh, PCE, and unemployment. So uh, any new data there might give us direction for the future. And that's why week to week, level to level, uh, month to month uh, close uh, is the best approach for what's, what's coming. And uh, overall, we expect some deceleration in June. So if I were to make a conclusion on that, that's what I would say, is that for now, because it's uncertain, we have to play week to week. We have to play month to month until June comes, and then we get more certainty as to what's going to happen.